Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and today I'm going to be doing a bookshelf tour. I'm super excited to do this video. I've been wanting to do this for such a long time. If anyone is curious, I do have the Ikea Billy bookshelves and last I counted, I think I have around 250 books. Before we get started, please make sure to like and subscribe for bookish content from me every single week. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram and Goodreads. I will have both of those linked down below. So we have a lot of books to get through, so let's just get started. Okay, so here is the top shelf of my first bookshelf. This is mainly a classics shelf. And as you can see, I have a lot of repeat copies of some really beautiful classics that I desperately need to get to. The first book is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I'll be honest, I know that this book does not have great reviews. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to think of it, but I know that this is Miss Bella Swan's favorite book. So I wanted to try it out, see how her taste holds up. I also also just think that this edition is really beautiful, kind of gothic, and I'm excited to read this one. And then we have Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. Definitely a super intimidating book, but I'm really, really excited to read it. I really want to watch the movie starring Queen Kira Knightley, but I would like to read the book first. Then we have Emma by Jane Austen, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This is one of my favorite classics. It's a really great romantic suspense paranormal thriller, and I definitely think if you are somebody who is new to classics and you wanted to sort of dip your toes in, this is a great option because it was written in the 1930s and I just find it to be a little bit more digestible than some other more popular classics. Then we have my cloth bound editions of Jane Austen's works. I got these from my wonderful mother-in-law and I just love these so much. They are like my prized possession. Here is what the front of Pride and Prejudice looks like. If I had to pick a favorite movie, I would definitely say the 2005 Pride and Prejudice adaptation is my favorite, so I'm super, super excited to read this and see how it holds up. Then we have North Anger Abbey, Love and Friendship, which I believe is a short story collection, Persuasion, Emma, Mansfield Park, and Sense and Sensibility. Then I have more copies of Jane Austen books, as well as a copy of Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. These are the Chiltern Classic Editions, really, really beautiful, and it has some gold sprayed edges. Then we have Dracula by Bram Stoker. This is the Seasons edition, the autumnal version, and I just think it's really, really gorgeous. Also has red sprayed edges. Then I have the Brothers Grimm, Grimm's Complete Fairy Tales, and Shakespeare's Tragedies. I will probably never read these books cover to cover, but I just really think that they're super beautiful and I wanted them on my shelves. This book has really beautiful art. I love the trees. I really love the cover of this one as well. I have read Romeo and Juliet and Macbeth, so I don't know. I could see myself free reading Romeo and Juliet, but yeah, I'm never, I'm probably never going to sit down and read this, but it looks really pretty anyway. Okay, and then we have the next shelf, which is mostly made up of classics, and then we move into some of my middle grade books. So first we have Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I have this really beautiful kind of gothic edition, and then we have a couple copies of my favorite classic of all time. That is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I have this kind of 60s or 70s art style edition. And then this is the edition that I read when I read it for the first time. And I also annotated this book. And this was the very first book that I annotated. It inspired me too, because there are just so many beautiful quotes in this book. Another classic that I read this year and absolutely loved was The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. So much so that I did buy three editions of that book as well. Then we have The Secret History by Donna Tartt. And then of course we have more edition of Jane Austen books. When I first started Started buying classics. These were the first editions I bought, and I just think they're really beautiful. I love this like classical art style. It's very soft and feminine and elegant, and I just really, really like these books. I love how simple they are, so I think I'm gonna hold on to these, even though I really do not need three or four copies. I don't even know how many copies I have of Pride and Prejudice, but I really, really like the art on this one. I also have another copy of Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. 
Persuasion by Jane Austen, and then Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I only have one copy of this classic, if you can believe it. Also, just another really beautiful book with very, like, creepy and haunting, but just super beautiful art on the cover. And then I have two short story collections. I have Black Swans by Eve Babbitts, which Eve Babbitts was kind of like a it girl in the 70s, and Black Swans has a bunch of stories from her time living in LA when she was in her 20s and 30s. And then The Bloody Chamber is a collection of short stories by Angela Carter, and these are dark feminist retellings of traditional fairy tales. The next book I have is Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. I read this book back in January or February, I want to say. Super, super beautiful. This is actually my sister-in-law's book, so just holding on to it for her until I see her again. And another book that is not mine is The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. This is Sean's best friend's book. We kind of stole it a little bit. I think Sean was reading it when we moved a few months ago, and so we just took it with us and I put it on my shelf. I don't have like a huge desire to read Ernest Hemingway, but I just think this is the most like perfectly damaged, well-loved paperback. It just is so perfect. It gives me major Jess Mariano vibes. Like, I definitely think that he would have a copy of a paperback that looks like this. Super well loved, obviously read many, many times, and so that kind of makes me want to read this book, but I just like how it looks on my shelves regardless. And the last classic I have on my shelf is And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, and then we move on to my middle grade and children's books. So I have the Spiderwick Chronicles. This was my favorite fantasy series as a kid. I loved it so, so much. I reread the series a ton when I was younger. I did try to find the original like early 2000s editions of these books, the first editions. I only found one set and it was $1,500 on eBay. So I was like, okay, not gonna be getting the first editions of these books. So I bought these reprinted versions. I still like the art style. It doesn't quite compare to the originals, but still really pretty. I really love this series. I reread it last summer just for fun and it was really great. I know that Disney Plus is making a Spiderwick Chronicles TV show, so I'm really excited to see how that goes. And then I have the Nevermore series, the Morgan Crow series by Jessica Townsend, Nevermore, Wondersmith, and Hollowpox. I love this series so much. This is the middle grade series that I am currently reading. I believe there are going to be nine books in the series, so I'm just so, so excited to see where this series goes. And then lastly, I have the Percy Jackson series, which is a series that I have not read, but I'm definitely going to read this year. Really, really excited to read it. And I got the Nerdy Ink Dust Jackets for this series. So here is the first one, the second book, the third book, which I think has my favorite cover, the fourth book, and the final book in the Percy Jackson series. All right, and this next shelf really has like no rhyme or reason, no organization, kind of just went off of vibes for this one. The first book is a thriller, My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. I'm really not into thrillers right now, but Samantha Downing is a thriller author that I've enjoyed in the past. So once I'm feeling up to reading thrillers again, I definitely want to pick this book up. Then we have The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, Anxious People by Frederick Bachman, such a good, wholesome, wonderful tearjerker. We have Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. I absolutely loved this book. I will say I think that the TV show is better than the book. Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This also has a really great TV show, but I did like the book more. Then we have The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. And then we have, and I did not even plan this, like I did not even realize this until I started filming, but we have like three of my favorite authors right next to each other, which I love. We have Sally Rooney, Taylor Jenkins Reid, and Mary H.K. Choi. All we need is Sarah J. Mass. Like this is my dream team, you know? Like this is, these are my moms. I just love them all so, so much. We have Beautiful World, Where Are You? Normal People, one of my favorite books of all time. Absolutely amazing. Super, super important book to me. And then Conversations with Friends, another Sally Rooney hit. And then for Taylor Jenkins Reid's books, we have Malibu Rising. I liked Malibu Rising. I think it's definitely her weakest novel that I've read so far. Malibu Rising just does not compare to her big sisters, Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones. Just cannot hold a candle to them. 
them. I love both of those books so much with my entire heart. They are some of my favorite books of all time. The cover of Evelyn Hugo is so, so gorgeous. I also really like the cover of Daisy Jones and the Six, but I definitely recommend listening to the audiobook if you haven't read this already. And then we have Mary H.K. Choi. We have Yoke, which I just read last month or the month before, and it blew me away. It was absolutely incredible. So as soon as I finished Yoke, I immediately went out and bought Permanent Record. Here's the cover for Permanent Record. I love the cover of her books. I love this art style. I love her eyeliner. This one is my favorite though, Emergency Contact. I love the pink and the gold and the tattoos and her hair. It's just super pretty. And then we have All the Light We Cannot See, A Curious Beginning, the first book in the Veronica Speedwell series, Lovely War by Julie Berry, a really great historical fiction that incorporates Greek mythology, Flight by Sherman Alexie. And then like, as you can see, this shelf is so, so random because I have the Wallflower series, which is a historical romance series. It's just like these little baby books are so hard to find a place on your shelf. I'm really excited to read this series though. I think I'm going to read it this summer. It seems like it'd be a fun kind of summer read. All right, and the next shelf down is a little more organized. We have thrillers and we have some horror. So the first book is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn, literally my favorite thriller of all time. I think this book is so brilliant. I think that this book has one of the best plot twists in literary history. I love it so much and I love the movie. If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. I haven't read this book, but I see a lot of people compare it to The Secret History, so I'm assuming it's like a dark academia thriller. I absolutely love the cover of this book. I think it's really kind of creepy and beautiful. Then I have In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead, another dark academia thriller. For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing, No Exit by Taylor Adams, probably my second favorite thriller of all time. So good. The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides, The Maidens by Alex Michaelides, They Never Learn by Sexual Female Dexter. Thank you very much. That is all you need to know if I haven't sold you on the book just by that alone. I, I don't know how else I can. And then we have Home Before Dark and Lock Every Door, pretty much the only two Riley Sager books that I loved. I gave Home Before Dark five stars and I gave Lock Every Door four stars. I read his other books and just did not like them enough to buy physical copies. Then we have Ace of Spades, another really beautiful book. This is a YA thriller. People compare it to Gossip Girl and Get Out, which sounds amazing. Then we have The Hunting Wives, Finley Donovan is Killing It, and Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead. I have the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy. I don't know if that's the name of the series, but I bought all three books because I saw a lot of people talking about these books a few months ago, another YA thriller series, and I heard that it's a super bingeable series, so I'm excited to try it out. And then we have my very small horror section. There was a time where I thought I was going to get more into horrors last year, but it just didn't really happen, and I've only read one of these books. So I have The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I am actually reading this next week for Spring Fling Oween. I'm really excited to try it out. I hear a lot of good things. I have Bunny, by Mona Awad, another one of my favorite books of all time. I love this book so much. It is such a trip and so much fun. Horror Store, and then my three Stephen King books, which are Salem's Lot, Firestarter, and The Shining. The next shelf is also kind of a mix. We have some paranormal fantasy, some Greek mythology retelling, some YA fantasy, and some adult fantasy. So starting us off, of course, we have the iconic Twilight Saga. I actually just read this series for the first time last year, so I did not pick these books up when they were really popular popular when I was in middle school. I don't know why, I just kind of missed the hype on them, but I did see the movies. I did go to all of the midnight premieres with my friends who were very into the books, and I love the movies. Like, I unironically think that the movies are really good, specifically the first one. The first Twilight movie is like a comfort movie for me, so I think if you go on my Goodreads and you look at my ratings for the Twilight Saga, I think I gave all of these books five stars. These books are not five stars. <laughs> like, I personally personally do not think that these are five star books. However, I had so much fun reading these and pretty much just like thought of the movies the whole time. So I think that's why I gave them five stars. I could maybe argue that the first one is a five star. I loved the first half of the first book. It was really good, but after a while it just gets to be a lot. So if you see my Goodreads ratings of the Twilight Saga, just look the other way. All right, and then I have two Greek mythology retellings. I have Ariadne by Jennifer Saint, and I also have Circe by Madeline Miller. This is the UK hardcover edition and I love it so much. I love the copper and I love the flowers. Next, I have this Waterstones, I think one year anniversary special edition of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. So I pre-ordered this before I read the book because I just thought it was so beautiful and I thought that I was gonna love the book. So I was like, oh yeah, I'll get the special edition. I ended up giving this three stars. I don't love this book. 
it's okay, but I think that this edition is really beautiful, and so I'm just gonna keep it because it looks nice on my shelves. And then we have the Shadow and Bone trilogy by Lee Bardugo. I definitely do not love this trilogy, but I do love the Six of Crows duology, and I personally think that you should read the Shadow and Bone trilogy before you get to the Six of Crows duology, so I kind of just hold on to it for like the nostalgia and also because of the show. I don't hate the series, they were quick enough to get through, but definitely not my favorite. And then we have the Truly Devious series and then the spin-off book The Box in the Woods by Maureen Johnson. This is another YA mystery thriller that I have not read, but I definitely need to get to. And then we have, of course, The Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I also got the Nerdy Ink dust jackets for this series. So we have The Hobbit, The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and The Return of the King. And then the very bottom of the shelf is like a catch-all. I have my US paperback editions of Harry Potter. I have my UK hardcover editions and then a bunch of cookbooks and like some of Sean's books and a Christmas candle. All right, and then moving on to my second bookshelf, we will start with the top shelf, which is my mainly romance shelf. I did kind of try to do a little bit of a rainbow situation going on. All right, so the first book I have on the shelf is Throttled by Lauren Asher. This is the first book in the Dirty Air series, which is an F1 sports romance. I read it on Kindle Unlimited. I really loved it, so I wanted to buy a physical copy. And then when I moved on to the second book, I also read it on Kindle Unlimited and kind of hated it. So I was planning to buy the whole series, but that's probably not going to happen now. So for now, this book is just going to hang out by itself. Then we have The Roommate by Rosie Dannon, Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, a classic, Twisted Hate by Anna Huang, which is the third book in the Twisted series, Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson, Love in Other Words, One True Loves, People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry, my favorite romance of all time, The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. Then I have two Mariana Zapata books, The Wall of Winnipeg and Me and From Lukov with Love. Unpopular opinion, I did not really like either of these books. I gave them three stars. They weren't bad, but something about Mariana Zapata's writing just doesn't really mesh with me, and I don't know if I'm going to continue on with reading the rest of her books. Then we have Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey, which is the second book in the Bellinger Sisters duet. The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa, The Unhoneymooners. It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey, which is the first book in the Bellinger Sisters duet and definitely my favorite between the two. Written in the Stars by Alexandria Bellafleur. Kiss the Sky. Then we have All Roads Lead Here and Culty by Mariana Zapata. These are the other two Mariana Zapata books that I own, but I honestly don't know if I'm going to read because I did not like The Wall of Winnipeg and Me and From the Cop of Love as much as I hoped I would. Then I have Neon Gods and Electric Idol, which is by Katie Robert, and then King of Battle and Blood by Scarlet St. Clair, which are three fantasy romances. Hot House Flower by Chris and Becca Ritchie. This is my favorite book in the Addicted and Callaway Sisters series and definitely changed me around on the series because I really did not like the first three books. Then we have Twisted Games by Anna Huang, which is a bodyguard princess romance. And then we have the first three books in the Addicted Callaway Sisters series that I mentioned I didn't really love, Addicted to You, Ricochet, and Addicted for Now. All right, and then the next shelf is my Throne of Glass shelf, I guess, because I do have two sets of the Throne of Glass series. I am missing Air of Fire in the first set. That's on its way, but I think it's coming from Book Depository, and just every time they ship to me, they take a really long time, so I am missing that one, but it is on its way. So the reason that I have two sets of this series, uh, one, it's one of my favorite series of all time, so I just like to have multiple copies, and two, the Instagram account A Touch of Magic Designs in collaboration with Dominique Wesson, who is a artist on Instagram. They are creating dust jackets for the Throne of Glass series, and I am so excited to get them and lately they have been kind of teasing them more and there's been sort of a buildup and I feel like they're going to come out very soon. So I just wanted to pick up another Throne of Glass series set so I could be ready so as soon as they are for sale I can buy them. I really do not like the original Throne of Glass covers so I'm really looking forward to those dust jackets coming out. And then we have of course the beautiful nerdy ink Throne of Glass dust jackets. I am obsessed with these. Particularly I love the spines. I love the font. I think the white pops really beautifully and I love the designs that they put on the covers. So we have Assassin's Blade, Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire. I think this is my second favorite cover. I love the green and I love the character on this cover. And then of course we have Queen of Shadows with another amazing character on the cover. This is my favorite. Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn, and Kingdom of Ash. I read the series for the first time last year and I'm very excited because Sahar from Basically Bookish Reads and I are going to be rereading them starting 
starting in May, and I know that we both cannot wait to get back to this world. Okay, in the next, I have more Sarah J Mass books and then a few other fantasy romances. So the shop and artist that I mentioned before, A Touch of Magic Designs and Dominique Wesson, they made these Akatar dust jackets, which I absolutely love. Unfortunately, a couple of them were damaged during the shipping process, but I still love them and they're still amazing. So you can see like a few of the dents there at the top. But this is, of course, the Accord of Thorns and Roses series. This was a series that got me back into reading as an adult. Like my, <laughs> my brain chemistry changed after I read this series. I just fell so in love with the characters and the story and Sarah J Mass's writing and like I just this this series means the world to me. I'm actually in the middle of rereading this series right now. It's going great. So far I've read Akatar and Akko Math, but I'm looking forward to getting to the rest of the series. So here is A Court of Thorns and Roses. There's the back, A Court of Mist and Fury, and the back of Akko Math, A Court of Wings and Ruin. The back, so good. And the little Hallmark Christmas special that is A Court of Frost and Starlight. And then my favorite, A Court of Silver Flames. So good, so iconic. And it has the mountain on the back. Okay, and then I have the collector's editions of A Court of Thorns and Roses and Throne of Glass. I would like to have these displayed because they are super pretty, but I just do not have enough room on my bookshelves. So I think I need to get another bookshelf. Here is the Akatar slipcover. And this is what the front of the collector's edition of Akatar looks like. It has Feyre hunting on the front. And then the back is just the forest. And here is the front of the Throne of Glass collector's edition and the back. And then I have Sarah J Mass's third series, Crescent City. So the first book is House of Earth and Blood. The second book, Crescent City House of Sky and Breath. That just came out in February. Such a game changer. So, so good. And then I also have the tour edition of House of Sky and Breath. So this is the tour edition. It's just a naked hardcover, but I think it's really beautiful. And then I have the Folk of the Air series by Holly Black, The Cruel Prince, The Wicked King, and The Queen of Nothing. This is my favorite YA fantasy series. I loved it so, so much. I read it for the first time maybe a month or two ago. Really, really loved it. It was so much fun. Cardin Greenbrier is everything. Then I have the Kingdom of the Wicked series, Kingdom of the Wicked and Kingdom of the Cursed by Carrie Maniscalco. So these are just the first two books that are out. I've only read Kingdom of the Wicked. I liked it. I didn't love it. I really hope that I like Kingdom of the Cursed. I know that a lot of people say it's a little bit more grown up, a little bit more new adult. So I hope that that makes me like it a little more. And I know that the third book is coming out in the fall, Kingdom of the Feared. The next book is Deal with an Elf King by a Elise Kova. I have not heard great things about this book. However, this book is beautiful. So like, even if I hate it, I'm gonna keep it. Cause like, look at that. That's just, that's absolutely stunning. And then I have A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This is a little bit of a different fantasy romance, a little darker, a little heavier. Definitely discusses topics of abuse and toxic relationships. It's a really beautiful and well-written story. And I loved some of the characters and dynamics in this book. I definitely recommend. And then A Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, which which isn't really a fantasy romance, but it just fit here. I definitely want to read this book very, very soon. I've had it for so long, but I'm just intimidated because I want to love it so badly and I hope it lives up to the hype. All right, and then we have more fantasy romance and then just general YA fantasy and adult fantasy. So the first series that you see here is the Zodiac Academy series. I'm obsessed with this series. I'm currently on book four, Shadow Princess. I'm actually filming a vlog for this series right now, so be on the lookout for that. But yeah, I absolutely love this. This is a bullet fantasy romance series. It's definitely not for everyone, but I've really, really been enjoying it. I will say I don't love the covers of these books. I kind of wish that these books would get like a hardcover, like makeover with some really pretty astrology and zodiac artwork. I just don't really love the brick background and like the glossy cover, but still love the series regardless. And then I have my two Aaron Morgenstern books. I have The Night Circus. This is a book that I read last November or December. I read it during the holiday season and it's definitely not a holiday book, but it's such a magical and whimsical book that it kind of does just remind me of the holidays. Erin Morgenstern's writing is so beautiful. I kind of want to reread this book this December just to get those vibes again. And then I have The Starless Sea. I have not read this book. I just kind of have to be in the mood to read Erin Morgenstern's writing, but I'm sure once I read this, I will love it. Then we have Dance of Thieves, Defy the Night, Legendborn by Tracy Dion, These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. And then I have the Diviner series, which is like a YA fantasy paranormal murder mystery kind of 
Eve series. Uh, none of the covers match except for the last two, but haven't really been able to find like a full set that all the books look exactly the same. So I just kind of have a little bit of everything going on here, but that is totally okay. I'm really excited to read the series. And then I have Jade City, the first book in the Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee, which is an adult fantasy. And then Midnight in Everwood. This is a Nutcracker retelling, which I'm really excited to read. I was a ballet dancer my whole life and I've been in so many productions of the Nutcracker. So I'm very curious to see what this is like. Okay, so the next shelf is sort of a mix once again of YA fantasy and adult fantasy. So I have This Woven Kingdom by Tahiri Mafi. This is a new release by this author and it's supposed to be like Game of Thrones set in the Persian Empire. That is how it is marketed. That sounds so, so great. Then we have the Gilded Wolves trilogy. I loved Gilded Wolves. I know a lot of people don't like this book and this series as a whole. I gave the first book four stars. I really, really loved it. The magic system is super rich. The world is really, really amazing. The first book is set in Paris and it's really, really gorgeous. There's great representation in this book. And I'm just surprised that more people don't like it. I know that it gets compared to Six of Crows a lot, but I truly feel like it stands on its own. It's a really, really good series and I highly recommend if you like heists and found family. The second and third book in the series, The Silvered Serpents and The Bronzed Beasts, I have not read yet, but I just wanna space out the series as much as possible so I don't have to leave this world. All right, and then I have my two Brandon Sanderson books. I've never read a Brandon Sanderson book. I'm very intimidated. So I decided to just buy the first book in the Mistborn series and the first book in the Stormlight Archives. I've watched so many videos about like, what order should you read Brandon Sanderson's books in? And I'm still very confused and I just don't know. I'm pretty sure I can read the Mistborn trilogy first and then just go on to the Stormlight Archives. If anyone thinks that I shouldn't do it that way, let me know if there's a better way to start with his books. I am excited. I definitely want to see what all the hype is about. I know he's kind of the king of fantasy right now and I definitely have some FOMO, so I need to read these books. And then we have The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang and then Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. This is such a gorgeous book. Even if I don't love it, even if I give it one star, I am keeping this forever because this is absolutely beautiful. And then I have The Beautiful by Renee Audier, which I believe is a paranormal romance set in New Orleans. All of us villains. And then I have a bunch of V.E. Schwab books, which I haven't read any of them. As I said earlier, I've only read Addie LaRue and I gave it three stars. I don't really know where to go from here with B.E. Schwab's books. So if you have a recommendation for which series I should start with, I have, I think all of her series here. I definitely want to read these and I want to enjoy her books more than I did Addie LaRue. So if you have a suggestion, definitely let me know. And then I have the Six of Crows duology, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. I have the collector's editions. I would say along with the Cruel Prince trilogy, the Six of Crows duology is my favorite YA fantasy. Inej is one of my favorite female characters of all time. I love her and Kaz's story so, so much. This is what the collector's edition looks like and it has red sprayed edges. And then this is the collector's edition of Crooked Kingdom, which has black sprayed edges. And then at the end of this shelf here, I have the Atlas Six. I have the traditionally published hardcover edition and the original indie version. I bought the traditionally published version just because I know that with the second book coming out in the fall, the author did say that she added a bit more to this traditionally published version. So I'm going to reread it just so I can get the most out of my experience with the second book, The Atlas Paradox. Okay, and then my last shelf here is basically just a Shadowhunter shelf plus a collection of fairy tales. So this book was actually mine when I was a little kid and I used to reread it all the time. It has basically every classic fairy tale in it. I like to keep it on my shelves because when I have my own kids one day, I love the idea of me reading this book to them. And then, as I said, this is the honorary Shadowhunter Chronicles. I don't have any of the novellas for the Shadowhunter Chronicles and I don't think I'm going to get them, honestly. I like the Shadowhunter books. I'm not obsessed with them, but I do enjoy them and I do want to read them all. There was a point in my life where I was planning to read all of these books by the time the third book in the last hour series, Chain of Thorns, came out, but that's definitely not happening. I feel like it comes out either next month or in the next couple months, I don't know, but I have read City of Bones, City of Ashes, and City of Glass, and I liked those three books. Like, they were good. I just, I'm, I'm gonna take my time with the series and whenever I read these books, it'll be when I read these books. <laughs> all right, guys, so that is going to be it for my bookshelf tour. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions about my books or bookshelves, go ahead and leave those down below. I hope you are having a wonderful day and I will catch you guys in the next one.